Hmm. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Tuesday live stream. Uh, just like the title and thumbnail suggests, we're going to take a look at uh, what I would could say is a little uh, concerning or bad news, but we'll get to the good stuff uh, pretty quickly. So on top of that, I'd like to answer a question that Ashley put out, which was this. This is the first cycle for me. I'm still wondering why I'm torturing myself. I'm going to give you some information and some data that I think is going to ease a lot of people's fears. So let's talk about this piece right here. So first of all, this was just came out this morning and talked about a Bitcoin mining operation called Rhodium files for bankruptcy in Texas courts. And I wanted to start with this just to kind of show people just how businesses kind of operate. I, I, I think we're all adults here. We understand some businesses make it, some don't. But there are different provisions that can help these businesses come along. And just because you're at the, the point of where it's bankruptcy, it's not so bad. And also, I want to remind everybody that this is all a business. All the things that we're talking about on this channel, all the things that we, that we allude to or for different cryptos, digital assets, it's a business. It really just, that's what it comes down to. Whether you're talking about this is going to change the, the, the face of the entire planet or this is just going to pump my bags, whatever it is, it's all a business. So we have to remember that and just take things with a grain of salt. So this is what we have for this little piece right here. And then we'll get into some more positive things. So this is a filing for bankruptcy was submitted on August 24th and includes six subsidiaries of this Bitcoin mining operation, Rhodium, Encore, Jordan, Rhodium 2.0, blah, blah, blah. Okay. The company's debts range, range between 50 million and 100 million, with, while its total assets are estimated to be between 100 million and 500 million. I got to tell you, if I was an investor in this company, which that's what we do, we are investing into companies. We are investing into the company that is Ethereum. We are investing into the company that is, insert your ecosystem favorite, favorite name. And that's really what it comes down to. And so when we don't make it and things don't work out, sucks, but that's the risk that we pay for being early stage investors. However, this part is actually quite interesting. Under Chapter 11 Voluntary Bankruptcy, the company will be able to reorganize its debts while continuing operations, allowing it to negotiate a repayment plan under revised terms. Of course, Scientific, for instance, filed for Chapter 11 in December 2022, citing falling crypto prices and high energy costs the company emerged from bankruptcy in early 24. So this is another great lesson too. When we're all talking about our different projects, we love them, right? We love them and it's all about the community and we're gonna save the world, sure. But uh, when these things come about and we talk about how like things kind of fall to the wayside, they don't really work too well, sometimes you just give a little bit of time. Like we just talked about on this little piece right here with Core Scientific. They went into bankruptcy, they reorganized and they came back. And now with this organization, Rhodium, maybe the same thing will actually happen. So I know right now it doesn't seem like it's the greatest of times to be into crypto, but I wanted to put this out first to remind everybody that just because the prices are the way they are now does not mean that those are going to stay the exact same way. It's all the business. We'll see where it all goes. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section. And this will get to Ashley's point. Her question is like, look, this is my first cycle. Why am I torturing myself? It's because, you know, Bigger moments are ahead. This is from friend of the show, Lady of Crypto. And she has a great post and she says, the fun part of the bull market only lasts around 12 months. In 2017, pump started in December. In 2016, and it's last 11 months. 2021, October 2020, and it lasted 30, 13 months. Both pumps start in Q4. The real bull run starts in Q4. And she lays it out just like we've laid it out in here as well as everything is just cycles that repeat. Now, I will kind of disagree with here on the, it's all in Q4. It is in Q4, but I, I believe it's towards the tail end of Q4 into Q1. And what I wanna show everybody is this, and it's kind of crazy how this works out because we talk about you know the quarters and things like that, but look at this. This is uh, again, stealing information from Ben's website into the Cryptoverse, links in the description. But if we take a look here, and we're taking a look at market cycles. I wanna show you something. Take a look at market cycle three. This is from the bottom of ROI to the top. And this all bottomed out in 2015. What I want you to notice is the days between 500 and 700. And that's why I named the title of this uh, live stream something about 700 days, because that's really what it takes to get to the next level. So notice this, on the 500, 
on the 500th day after the bottom of the cycle. It seems pretty flat, doesn't it? And this is around, and it'll show you here, May 27th, 2016. And you just kind of, I mean, there's like little, little pumps here, and then it kind of goes down, and then it kind of goes flat and sideways, and nobody likes this part. So between these, between the days 500 and 700, remember, around May, all the way into December, which would be Q4, right? They're pretty crappy days. And this is the time for me, I just talk about like accumulation. So does it do the same thing in cycle four? Absolutely. Check this out. So on the 500th day, I have a little bit of a pump here, but it's pretty much sideways. Then it has a little bit of pump sideways and nothing really starts to happen until the 700th day. And look at this. On the cycle four and cycle three, what were the dates? May or June, July, August, September, October, into November, late December. That's when things start to really take off and then up and to the right. So Lady of Crypto is absolutely correct. I have to commend her for uh, you know breaking it down like that. But to me, it's a, it's a 500, 700, 800, 900 day type of uh, journey. And off we go. And as a reminder, this is where you're at. You're at market cycle five. We talked about this yesterday. We are lining up exactly where we are supposed to be. Small fluctuations, but what do you notice? Things going up and the right. So again, it's very hard to get here because to get to this point, you have to have bought in the bear market. And that part sucks. And if you did that, you're in a much better position right now. So that's what we got. I think, I don't, I know people are freaking out. I just don't get it. I, I, I still say we're like in the right place at the right time, but maybe I'm wrong here. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section. Tell me how off I am <laughs> and so on and so forth. But also here's some good news, base. And I know we talk about Ethereum and the ETF. And I think we focus on that a little bit too much. We shouldn't. Um, there's good things going on on the Ethereum blockchain, more specifically layer twos. And base kind of lays this out. So base, of course, is the digital asset or crypto from Coinbase itself. No, there is no token, but a lot of different developers and users are actually going for it, even though there's no token, because it's cheap and it's fast and it's easy. And because of that, base hits a million dollars, a million dollars, one million daily active addresses as this thing called base names takes off. And you've seen this before. So base names, if you don't know, you can you can essentially it's like unstoppable domains. You can you can buy your name on the base blockchain, and it could be like you know, digital asset news dot base or whatever it is. And because of that you can see how much it's grown. So this figure represents a 60% growth in the number of daily active addresses since the start of August. It's pretty good. The record number of new daily active addresses came following the launch of the base name service on August 21st. Wow, that's pretty fast. If I'm not mistaken, are we not in like 20, what is, jeez, 27, it's pretty good. In a week, uh, base creator Jesse Pollock noted that over 200,000 new base.eth usernames had been minted in the first week. That's pretty great. In comparison, and this I, I think I think is the big thing about going between layer one blockchain Ethereum to layer twos, and it states it perfectly right here. In comparison, there are 1.96 million active Ethereum name service names at the time of publication, which is substantially more, right? But it took them nearly two years for the ENS service to reach 200,000 registered addresses. Two years. And it took base essentially one week. So base now accounts for almost 10% share of total DEX volume on Ethereum, up from 2.81% in March. So I know people say, ah, Ethereum's an old chain, it's not gonna work. Look, with layer two solutions, who knows what it could be? This is why we diversify. Again, we're investing into companies. And that's really what it comes down to. Let me know where I'm off there. Comment in the comment section. And then also, I, I feel a shift going on, not just in like layer two solutions and you know, being in the right place and all that stuff, but there's a big d discussion going on about freedom of speech. And this, I did not have this on my bingo card, but Meta or Facebook came out and pretty much went against the US government for telling them to do things, which we all knew they were doing. And they are essentially are apologizing and saying, we'll never do that again. This is from <clears throat> the office of Meta. And uh, this has been relayed to uh, one of the chairmen's committee of the judiciary, House of Reps to Jim Jordan. 
This was dated August 26, 2024. Check this out. In 2020, and this is the, the highlight of the good stuff. In 2021, senior officials from the Biden administration, including the White House, repeatedly pressured our teams, that would be Facebook, for months to censor certain COVID-19 content, including humor, satire, and express a lot of frustration with our teams. Ultimately, it was our decision whether or not to take the content down, and we own our decisions. I just want to give you guys a hint. They did take it down. And they were doing the things that they probably shouldn't have done, but it is their platform, and that's their God-given right as owners of that corporation, so that's fine. But Zuck says, I believe the government pressure was wrong, and I regret that we were not more outstoke, outspoken about it. I also think we made some choices that with the benefit of hindsight and new information, we would not make today. So freedom of speech becoming a big thing because people are clamping down. And that's the whole point of the decentralization aspect of cryptos and digital assets, even decentralized social media platforms. So like with this, I mean, you can just see that all the different things that people talk about are like, oh, that's just a, that's just a, a foolhardy, uh, crazy notion of, of what's going on. And Michael even says it here, ivermectin as well. I mean, these things are just, they've actually been proven correctly. And now here we are. And now we've got somebody like Zuckerberg coming on saying, yeah, that is what it was. So freedom of speech, I think is going to be a big thing and coming up with the presidential election. And also a little follow-up here, uh, Pavel Durov, Telegram CEO is still sitting in a prison in France uh, for creating Telegram and allowing people to use it. That's pretty much the story. But there's a couple of nuances that uh, have come up. Just so you know that uh, unless they formally charge him by Wednesday, the charges that were relayed to us uh, that we found out about yesterday, those were just investigative topics. That was not, he was not been formally charged so far. And that's what we got here. So Durab's arrest has raised calls and fears about government overreach. Even Vitalik Buterin comes out and says, I've criticized Telegram before for not being serious with encryption. But given the info available so far, the charges seem to be just being unmoderated, meaning they're not doing the things that they would like. The government is not, or Telegram is not doing the things that the government wants them to do as far as moderating these different speeches and different Telegram groups and not giving up people's data. This looks very bad and worrying for the future of software and communication freedom in Europe. Also, Telegram offers an encryption, which means message content is only accessible to the sender and the recipient. I didn't know this actually was a thing. Contrary to popular belief, as far as encryption is not a default setting in Telegram. Did you know that? I thought it was uh, always encrypted, but apparently not. It must be manually enabled as secret chats. I thought I'd been doing like encrypted talk this whole time. But <laughs> Apparently not. So if you're looking uh, to see how that actually works, uh, first of all, if you want to sign a petition, I link that in the description to free Pavel. But if you're trying to do like some kind of encryption between yourself and somebody else, you have to go to that person's profile, click on those three dots under more and click on start secret chat. If you're not doing that, all the information that you are chatting between two individuals, three, five, or even a group, uh, it doesn't matter. It's 100% uh, open for everybody to look at. So just so you're aware of that, that's what's going on. And then next to last was somebody in, in the article talks about uh, that Telegram is actually a very poor choice and they've hailed Signal as the best encrypted messaging alternative to Telegram. I find that funny because like, if that's the whole point, and that's what France brought Pavel into and said, hey, you gotta, you know, we, we can't have you encrypted. What's to say that anybody is safe? Let's say the founder of Signal is traveling around, he stops off in Spain or some part of the EU and says, hey, uh, we're gonna bring you in because you're not allowing us to, to spy on everybody. That's essentially what it is, it seems like. Signal could be that. And then there's been a lot of different things come out. This is from Walker, very funny. He says, breaking France has arrested Michael Scott and his own associates at the Dunder Mifflin Paper Company. Scott and his associates allegedly distributed paper products that allowed criminals to secretly communicate with each other. Now this is a tongue in cheek type of thing, but yeah, I mean, it's just, 
It just baffles me why this is. And then I will say that even though this is negative, all news is good news. According to data from App Figures, Telegram has risen to the top of the French marketplace in the social networks category. It's become the third most popular app in the country overall, including games and utilities. And the total number of downloads worldwide has increased by 4%. In the US, Telegram climbed 10 positions, ranking eighth in overall popularity and second in the social networks category. These are the highest numbers for Telegram since the beginning of 2023. So there is that positive aspect to it. Uh, hopefully it lasts, but unfortunately, I can't give you nothing but good news. I must give you the alternative side of this. And this isn't going to be very popular, but here we go. So this was actually of Natalie G on one of my posts. And she says, you know, and she, she reposts this. This is from Stas Olenchenko. It says, a little reminder for free speech defenders of Pavel Durov. He happily took down the channel of Iranians protesting against the dictatorship in 2017, but he refused to take down channel of Russian fascists posting videos of blah, 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 and Ukrainian POWs. So I had to look that up, and that is 100% true. That actually came through. So you have to ask yourself, well, you know, what is this all about? Is this subjective as to what is being laid out and what is being censored? Or is there some kind of ulterior motive? I will tell you, if you take a look at the terms of service, which I linked in the description for you to see, it does state very clearly, by signing up for Telegram, you accept our privacy policy. Using our service to send spam or scam users, you agree not to use our service to send spam or scam. Promote violence on publicly viewable Telegram channels, bots, etc. Post illegal pornographic content on publicly viewable Telegram channels, bots, etc. So the question you have to ask is if they're going to do that for this Iranian government and the and it promotes violence, what about other parts of it? And I think that's that that that's the big key. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not telling you that this is my legal armchair stance. I'm just raising the question so that everybody understands that there's always two sides to every story. And lastly, I will say this on Telegram and TonCoin. I like Ton. Very fast, easy to use, very simple. However, when things come up, I got to bring it out to the uh, community. This is from Oleg, Oleg Pomenko from uh, Sweat. And he states, Ton blockchain, blockchain, blockchain crashes on the dog's token generation event at 280 transactions per second. Let me say that again. Ton, Ton blockchain crashed on a goofy new token called Dogs, which you got through by playing a game in, through NotCoin. And it crashed. 280 TPS. And he says, and he rightfully so, he says, well, near protocol held sweat economy TG two years ago already. And they had hundreds of millions. I want to say it's 160 million people transferred over from Web 2 to Web 3. And this has all been verified. And you can take a look at this. I think it's called... No, no, no. I'm not going to just give you that. Let's see. You can go to tonviewer.com and you can verify this information. Tonviewer, T O N V I E W R.com, and take a look at the TPS and why it actually collapsed. So that's, that's true. And having talked all about that, but Rob, you're, we're investing in businesses. This is also true, but just as a reminder, Dogs is almost in the top 100 by market cap. So sometimes it's not the greatest technology. Sometimes it's not the greatest people. Everything is fallible. But if you got dogs, which is essentially a token for a tap tap game on Telegram, and it's almost in the top 100, where does that put you in your investments? I don't know. I can't tell you. I'm not your dad. That's it for today. So look. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's bad. Sometimes I just got to tell you the truth. And that's really what it comes down to. So thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. If you'd like to stick around and talk about this stuff, we'll do a little Q&A. And uh, this is like my favorite part. So if you got to take off, take off. I appreciate you. I really do.